You're watching Texas Silver. Thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, this is going to be the fourth installment of the Bill Holter interview, and this will be the last of them. I'm going to talk to Bill, and hopefully I can do this maybe once or twice a month from here on out. It seems like I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on this. So I'm glad everyone's enjoying these videos. So, but this is going to be the last one. Uh, before we get into this, uh, we're, we're going to talk about preparations and we're not going to go real deep into it. Just some basic stuff, uh, just the basic things that you need, at least the top five, five or six items that you need. Uh, but there's a channel that I follow. It's called Appalachia's Homestead. Uh, and the, the lady's name is Patera. And she seems like a very humble, a uh, very godly woman and she does a lot of the stuff that I do but I think on a whole nother level I know she's into uh, gardening and she has a homestead she has goats chickens stuff like that so check her channel out I know Jeremiah babe follows her channel and um, he actually turned me on to that so if you need any ideas or how to do some of these things uh, she has videos that I would highly recommend that you check out um, also, she put out a video today that really resonated with me. She was talking about how we need strong men right now, strong, godly men. And um, if that's you and uh, you're, you're not where you should be, let's get there. You need to learn how to use these tools right here. I can't express how important it is to have these tools and know how to use them, be uh, efficient with them and accurate. And, and all that. So anyways, enough rambling. Uh, again, thank you everyone for being here. Like, subscribe, share the videos. And if you haven't seen the other three, please go back and check them out. It was a great interview. Uh, that's it. God bless. Take care. And hopefully y'all enjoy this one as well. Exactly. Uh, whatever. So that's, yeah. so whoever says that, good luck to them. Yeah, that was kind of a shocking, you know, that's my plan. I'm just going to take what I need. <laughs> well, I think yeah, I think he'll end up with lead poisoning. Yep. So, um, okay, so I want to ask you this because you you moved out of the country, what, in 06 to 09? Is that? 06 Costa? to 11. 11, okay. So you, you went to Costa Rica. Yeah. So uh, CNBC had a recent article talking about rich people that are getting multiple passports uh, when all this goes down, is there anywhere to hide? Uh, do you want to be in another country when all this goes down? Um, my experience in Costa Rica, I mean, my thought was, I'm going to hide. Right. But you can't hide because you stand out. Right. You're not one of them. Right. You don't speak the language, you know. And their thought process down there is, if you're a gringo and... Even if you're just on Social Security making fifteen hundred, two hundred, two thousand a month, you're rich. Yeah, you're rich. Right. So you're a target. So my Spanish got good enough to understand that they didn't really like us. They liked that we spent money. Right. Yeah, they liked your money. Um, as far as your question of, you know, and yeah, people are 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 getting passports to to be able to go places. How readily and freely is there going to be travel anyway? I mean, yeah. are airlines going to still are airlines going to fly even though the banks are closed? Right. Um, and I mean, that's going to be for a spell. But if if you're in place ahead of time, do you blend in? Do you blend in with that society? Do you speak their language? Um, do you, you look like society? You, you, <laughs> yeah. Do you stick out like a sore thumb? Right. You don't want to stick out. You want to blend in. And it was my uh, thought process or decision making that rather than you know try to defend against everything and I mean I when I lived in Costa Rica I had two two big black German shepherds and every two or three weeks I'd go out and fire 30, 40, 50 rounds on a Saturday or Sunday when it was quiet and I, you know in the valley it's two million people and you could hear those shots 15, 20 miles away. And my driver told me, Bill, everyone around here calls you the crazy gringo. <laughs> were, they, and, were they wrong? With guns and dogs. <laughs> yeah, but the point being... Yeah, no, I know why you did it. And and yeah, it worked. But in a system breakdown, you're going to get overrun. And I just think that it's better to try uh, to defend a position shoulder to shoulder with people that think like you. 
Right, they right. They don't believe in the same things you do. Right, because the rest of the world, for the most part, doesn't like America because of everything we've done. I don't think they, well, like how it's the board. Well, it's yeah, not but Americans like, that they don't like. It's the American government. government. That they right, don't like. right. And so we are probably, if we're in another country and America was the reason that all this has fallen apart, we're probably not going to be like that was I was even thinking about that back in you know 2008 2009 that if the system went down I'm thinking it's an American problem right so they're gonna it was made in America it wasn't our fault but you're gonna be right the gonna, person that's yeah, there and yeah you know it's like when you were a little kid your brother or sister did something and they pointed at you right and you so you're gonna your, be guilty by association you got your ass whipped right so Okay, so I know people on this channel, not everyone has the resources and, you know, all that that people such as yourself or me. So I don't want to put an exact number, but what are the top five things that someone should be doing if, if they're on a budget? What's, what's most important? Say their budget. Say they haven't done anything right now. They all of a sudden woke up like, oh, I need to prepare. So their budget's a couple, you know, maybe a couple grand. Like what? What yeah, are they? If you got a two thousand dollar budget, I mean, I'd be stocking up on rice, beans, uh, potato flakes, just heavy, bulky stuff from a food standpoint. Because okay. you can't, you can't go forward. You can't, you can't do anything. You can't load your gun or fire your gun if you're on the floor because you got low blood sugar and you're dying. Right. Um, so I mean, food is the absolute number one. That's the absolute number one thing. And, of course, in your comment section, you're going to get the, the idiot who says, oh, but you can't buy food with gold and silver. Or you can't eat gold and silver. Right. But you can buy. If you have the means after right. storing up food, after securing a water supply, securing some type of power, whether it be uh, generators, solar, what have right. you, you get to have some type of... of uh, some type of energy. Okay. You gotta have some type of way to protect that. You gotta have guns. Right. Come here, girl. You gotta have. You gotta have a couple. Come here. You gotta have a couple of these. I mean, right. And we were gonna get to her in a little yeah. bit. Um. You need to be able to protect your, your, your position. You can only do what you can do. I mean, your whatever your budget, whatever anybody's budget is. I mean, do I wish I had two hundred seventy million dollars that I could build? A bunker that's you know, hundred yards underground. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. But I don't have two hundred seventy million dollars, right. and that two seventy fell out of Zuckerberg's pocket. I mean, he's building this this monstrosity. Right. Right. So you've got everything's relative. Yeah. So you've got security. So you got to start off with food. Well, I'm just listing the five. Mine's security, but we'll go with yours. So fine. Food, water, security. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. And then what? Precious metals. That way, you have some well, sort of way you to. Well, you got to protect your wealth. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you have wealth left over after you've prepped. Yeah. So you need to protect. You know, a couple hundred dollars yeah. in mercury dimes. That way, you have at least some way to um, transact. Yeah, but let, I mean, there's people they'll be watching this and say, "Wait a minute, that you know, all that's good, but I got five million or I got ten million. Well, well, well. Obviously, if it's I'm just for the little man that doesn't have. Well, yeah, for for somebody who has a small budget, I mean, still precious metals are the right. last, the the last thing. Okay, so you wouldn't even, so you wouldn't even do precious metals if you were on a budget, and so so what would it be then? First aid. Well, you medical. Gotta, get a food food. Uh, you should stockpile if you're on medications. Okay. Thank God I'm. I've not done any type of medications. Um, yeah, and obviously if you have more means, then you just expand from there, just have more food, more, you know, preps, and then you start getting into, you know. Right, and you're prepping. I mean, if you got family, you're prepping for family. They don't even know you're prepping for them, but, you know, you're doing it. Um, but if you're on a, on a tight budget, you've got to start with, you got to start with what keeps you, what keeps you alive, and then, keeps you alive from a protection standpoint. Right, right. So, I mean, our only difference is you want to shoot them, I want to have a meal before I shoot them. 
<laughs> right, right. Well, and then that's why I go back to the group thing, you know, that my background is military, police, so th that's my bread and butter. That's what I bring to the table. Obviously, I have other skills, but my main thing is, you know, I know how to professionally, you know, take people's lives. And so that's that's my thing that I bring to the table. So that's why you bring other people in because, um, you know, with, with you, you have stuff that everyone has has holes. I have holes in my preps. I'm sure you, yeah. But so like, that's how you, you help fill these holes with other people that you bring into your group that where you don't have the background that I do, but you have other stuff in place that I don't. And so us together, we right. became, we become more unstoppable. Um, and that's, that's and that's where we're on to that. So let's yeah. talk about Athena. Well, that's, that's the saying. One is none. Because you might have a, a dog that all of a sudden turns tail and runs. Right. Two are one, and three are unstoppable. Right. Um, and obviously, you've paid a lot of money for her. Not everyone can do that, but just right, even but if, if you, you can, can... A, a good, right. uh, a good, solid Malinois, Dutch Shepherd, German Shepherd. You don't really want to do a German Shepherd in South Texas. Right. It's too hot. It's really not fair to them. And I mean, many other breeds. I mean, he, I had a great, great golden retriever that I took him for a walk, and I got surrounded by six dogs, and he fought them all off. Nice. Um, but a couple dogs, a couple dogs, not just one, but a couple right. dogs are important. And don't forget, you've got to be able to feed them. Right. Yeah, definitely. Because. Do you want to get her over here? See if she'll. So yeah. someone come so they can see her. Come on. Come on. So you actually have she's not your only one. Well, she is right now. Right. Yeah. But you have another one yeah. coming. Come and on. and so Six. Athena is actually not uh the one that was on Jeremiah's uh yeah, that, was, that was Ziva. That was Ziva and uh the two dogs were were apart for a year. And they got along, they got along very, very well until they both were here on property together. And uh, this one's more stable than Ziva was. Uh, just to give you an idea, and if I, if I had a video of it, mm -hmm. which I didn't have my phone or nobody had a phone, at, we're right out in the field, a steer broke onto the property and her, Ziva and another dog were herding it off the property, the steer turned and got aggressive and Ziva was on that thing's back like a lion. Uh, tore it to the ground three times. Um, super dog, but not a dog where you could have other animals in the house. Yeah. So I had to give her up and I've got another one coming within, hopefully within a month or two to be her wingman. But it's important. I mean, if you're going to have if you're thinking about a dog, think about two dogs. Right. Because really, think about it. If you are in a situation, you want somebody who's got your back. Right, exactly, yeah. And it's amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I can go to the, the gym and I'm doing a rolling machine. She'll sit facing my back. Right. And uh, I guess this is a while back, probably four, three, four, five months ago. Um, she had never made a sound in the gym. Never barked anything. I don't, and she walks around. I, I, she's got a leash on her, but she's you know right on my hip. So I'm rowing, and all of a sudden she starts barking and growling, and I'm I'm like, I look, and it was a maintenance guy walking from behind me with a wrench about that long. She saw it as a weapon. Right. Yeah. And they're they're. They're uncanny. Yeah, they're highly but indulgent. It's important to have two because it gives, it just adds confidence, and two dogs become a pack. Right, and then it's a pack mentality. And they also buy you time. Oh, absolutely. They they might not be able to get it done. Right, but you it know, gives you, you got, time to it get. Gives you time to to get an AR or whatever. Right, right. So, last question before I. Release you to talk about whatever. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, the about that. We'll we'll probably remain somewhat under wraps. Okay, cool. Uh, but the last question I had before I'm I'm going to give Bill the floor and I'm going to let him 
<coughs> kind of talk about what's what's on his mind. Uh, do you think we'll make it to the elections or the selections, whatever you want to call it? Well, I mean, I'm on the record, and I started uh, probably end of November this past year saying that I think there's less than a 50-50 chance that we even have an election. Right. That there will be some type of false flag event uh, because those that are in power now, I don't think they're going to be able to cheat enough right. to retain power. And if they lose power and there's any semblance of the rule of law, you're going to see a lot of you're going to see a lot of assholes going to jail. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question, I think it's less than a 50-50 chance that we have an election. Okay. Uh, I guess before we get into that, uh, if you want to let the viewers know where they can get a hold of you, uh, if they want to oh, buy yeah. precious metals or yeah, yeah. just... Sure. Uh, my website is uh, www.billholter.com. Uh, there is a contact button on there, or if you want to contact me directly... Uh, my email is bholter at proton.me. So, yeah. Um, again, I appreciate Bill doing this interview, and then I'm going to let you talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, we talked about this the other day, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we when you wanted to do the interview. And I'm like, you know, I, I get... I, I try to be measured... And I was one of the three strikes for three different channels that got taken down. Um, so no, I don't want to see your channel get taken down. You might want to do this this part of it on Rumble. Um, it, I guess I guess it's frustrating to me that no matter what it is. Of, of current events, of the current world that I talk about. I've got to be measured. Um, and it just, it's, it goes against my grain. I mean, what goes against my grain? We're, you know, we're talking about the military. And uh, generals wearing dresses, that goes against my grain. Right. Um, I told you the story. I got not accosted, but you know, verbally accosted in Austin four years ago by a tranny demanding a cigarette because I'm white and I'm rich. I mean, it's it's society has has gone so far off a cliff, and what I think people are are missing is that this is it's good versus evil, but what they're using is such a small, minuscule number to affect and, if you want to call it, rule people's lives. You know, it's, 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 it's no longer uh, socially acceptable to say the word it. It's no longer, I mean, it's, it's no longer socially, so much is, is not socially acceptable, but it's not socially acceptable by what, maybe 3% of the population? And it's like our lives have been, uh, our lives have been, have been altered. People live their life differently now because they don't want to offend people. Right. And, and my thought process is, I mean, I, I, try to, I try to be straightforward about everything. And if I'm offending somebody because I'm telling the truth, well, piss on you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, well I know. No, I'm not sorry. Let right. me take that back. But <laughs> the right. piss on you part, you know, that, that's, it just, I'm, I'm fed up. I'm, I'm fed up with, with where this has gone. Um, COVID was a complete scam. And when I say COVID was a complete scam, I don't know that many people know, and you can look this up, that from 2019, there was, from 2015 to 2019, there was an average of, uh, I think it's like 32 million, 35 million flu cases. Right. And then 2020 came along, or 2021, I forget which year they measured, 
and there was only 1,700 flu cases in the United States. So, what? Hooray! <laughs> COVID, COVID cured the yep. flu. Right. I mean, you know, they've they've gone hundreds of years and can't cure the common cold or flu, but they finally figured out how to do it with the, with COVID. Um, the jabs. The reason uh, I was a strike on three separate channels was because they asked me in early, mid-2021, after the, the vaccine had come out, they said, well, so what do you think of the vaccine? And I, I just flat out said, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I do know if you take it, you are the guinea pig, because they did not have time right. to test it. Right. What's not true about that? That's absolute truth. Right. And YouTube took channels down, you know, and I contributed to it by telling the truth. And it just pisses me off that we've gotten to the point where to be socially acceptable, it's got to spew from your mouth. You've got to lie. And I'm not willing to do that. So how today do you determine truth from, from a lie? Oh, that's, that's simple. If it's on TV, if it's on, on uh, any type of mainstream media, if they're pushing something, it, it, it's a lie. Right. And that's, it, I mean, it makes it really easy. Then, since you already know that it's a lie, now you get to dig as to why it's a lie. Right. I mean, that's, they, they really have made it simple. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the thing with the central banks too. And, then, and I'm not it, talking, and I'm I'm not talking left or right here. Right. Because there's a lot of stuff on Fox that, that you know, there's 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 stuff that comes out. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't trust right. pretty much. I don't even watch mainstream They're, anymore. At it's all. not as stupid or ignorant because the stuff that comes out on MSNBC. I mean, did you see the woman the other night? Uh, uh, talking about the eclipse was caused by climate change why and, not and here we got a uh she used to be representative and then she lost the houston uh mayoral election who's saying that the the moon is mostly gas what the gas caused by what cheese yeah i maybe. mean you got you have idiots running around that mainstream media is propping up as the gospel truth and you know if you if you don't conform to that then you're racist you're a bigot you're a misogynist you're this you're, you're an ist right and I mean I I didn't grow up like this I I grew up uh, you know I'm older than you but I mean I grew up in the 60s early 70s and shit the stuff we watched on you know we, we would watch TV shows, and a lot of them had, like, a lesson. You got taught a lesson of, about good versus bad. Right. And, you know, the lesson today is, if if you don't allow your transgender kid to, to morph from girl to boy or whatever, then, you know, you're abusing your kid and you need to go to jail. Yeah. Um... I mean, gun. I mean, we could talk about all kinds of things. We could talk about guns. We could talk about uh, the history, and it goes way back before this. But in my lifetime, uh, my very first memory of life was JFK getting shot. Right. And here we are, sixty-one years later, and has that really been questioned? No. No. We 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 thought Trump was going to show us this, you know, all the right. declassify everything. Nope, that didn't happen. Um, you have absolute truth tellers: Edward Snowden, Julian Assange. They're persecuted, and it was you know absolute absolute truth. Yeah, I know you wanted to talk about um, the event that happened that started. Yeah, I mean. Back in, in 2001, that was absolutely obvious. It was, I mean, it was obvious that it was a demolition. You had girders 
they were cut at 45 degree angles. The only thing that can cut a girder in, in that split second is thermite. They found traces of thermite afterwards. Three weeks, four weeks later, there's still molten lava in the, in the basement. And th th the reason these things piss me off is because I have a decent nose fit. I can see through it, I can smell through it. And, you know, right after that, hey, leave it. Seats, good seats. Um, the reason it irritates me is because I, I can, I just, I, I have a knack to see through things. I have a knack to, to not get distracted. But that makes me and it makes other people that, that see the truth, try to tell the truth, they get attacked. And, you know, it, it was, it was a battle. And I don't, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much throwing my hands up in the air because it's, it's over. This, this country is financially screwed, socially screwed, and it happened on our watch. I mean, I, did, I, did I try to tell people? Did I try to tell? I mean, I left the country in 2000, end of 2006, telling people, you know, the financial system's going to break. Right. And, you know, I had people laughing at me. Uh, it just, it, it, it's been a battle. And at this point, we lost. Right. So every, battle's over. So everything that you had been screaming at the top of your lungs for the last, what, 10, 15, 20 years, now yeah. is all. It's, it's happened or happening. Right. And, and back then, people thought you were off your rocker. Oh, whack job. Right. Yeah, total whack job. <laughs> I am kind of a whack job. Man. <laughs> but not when it comes to, like, real stuff. Right, yeah. No, I mean, you, yeah, you know when it's time to have, you know, have a good time and, and when it's serious. So, anything else? No, I guess that's, um, we'll just drop it at that. All right. We'll keep your channel up and running. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'll probably put this on <laughs> on a separate, uh, separate one. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but, I said the magic word. Right. COVID. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we can do this once a month, maybe every couple months, whatever. Uh, if, if this country is still here. Well, and, it'll, it'll be here until it's, I mean, it's not going away. Right. Right. But, but our system is going to be drastically altered and not recognizable. Yeah. And I assure you, even people that see it, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to look at things and go, oh, my God, I didn't never even. Right. Yeah, I think we know what's coming, but even once it hits, I think it's still going to be, like, shock. Like, even when these metals start, you know, going to the moon, I'm still, well, like, I expect it. You'll have, but... you'll have wealth that you'll be able to transfer to the yeah. next system. But, and I had this conversation uh, 10, 12 years ago. I had dinner with uh, John Embry. And John, he was a famous uh, Eric Spratt's partner. Um, we were talking one night at dinner, and he's like, "Do you really want to be the the wealthiest person in the world with all this silver and gold, <laughs> but nowhere to spend it?" Right. And I mean, that's what a what it boils down to is the the system. It's it's not going to function for for quite a while. Right. And it's going to have lots of fits and starts. Um, we're probably going to go through. Uh, we'll go. We'll definitely go through one currency. Yeah, I was going to say a couple different. We're yeah. going to go through at least one currency. It's a CBDC, which will fail. Um, but you know, you don't want to sell your gold or silver for a currency unless you absolutely can trust it. Right. And understand that's what this has all been all about. It's been run on trust. And when trust is broken, it's almost impossible to get back. And that's why it's going to be a long slog back to, you know, a, a productive lives that, uh, you know, you don't wake up every morning. I, wanna, I don't want to say in fear, but with trepidation of, of, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get interesting. Yeah. yeah I mean, it is. Well, it's already interesting. Well, yeah, it's. Can yeah. you imagine uh, us having this conversation, even five years ago? 
even 50 months ago, because 50 months is just before COVID. Okay. Can you imagine if, if we were, if, if you and I were having this conversation uh, yeah. in January of, of 2020? Right. I mean, a national lockdown was unthinkable. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, I didn't even really, like, I guess I always thought it was going to be a Second Amendment thing, but because no one teaches you any of this. You have to figure out there is something wrong and go looking for this. Right. And in 2016 was kind of my awakening when I started buying metals yeah. uh, because I always figured my currency was going to be bullets. Right. And, and it, bullets are a great currency. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Really good currency. Yeah. Well, you just got to be careful when you and, trade them to make sure they don't get used yeah, on you. they don't get turned back at you. Yeah. Right. So. But, hey, bullets may become the primo currency. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if ammo's not, you know, let's say we're two, three, five years into bad times, ammo's could become, ammo could be uh, yeah, cause the part, number one currency because you can't replace what you fire. Right, right. And, yeah, if credit freezes and all that, then, you know, stuff isn't being put on the shelves. So when all this goes down, you're just, that's all you're going to have. Well, that's, when it goes down... You will have what you have, right. and that's yeah, all that's, you're going to have. Right, that's what I'm, yeah. And that's that's why you prep now, because you can. Right, you just you have to. do it not under pressure. Right. Whereas a later date, you're not going to be able to do it. Um, and that's going to be a permanent hole in your plan. Yeah. And I used to say, if I'm wrong, oh, well, you put some food back, just eat it, and blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, it's, it's the question of, of whether this is Bill Holter's opinion or not. Those days are over because right. it's pure math. Right. It's, now it's, it's, a guaranteed, it's a guaranteed collapse because the math cannot work. Yeah, and yeah, math is math. It can't be a... Unless it's like Seattle math, because that stuff is racist. <laughs> All right, we got to stop. <laughs> All right, we're out. <laughs>